Hi there, it's Josh again. And last time, I told you how I might have been the cause of my crush Becca's disappearance. And today, I'll be telling you how she's been haunting my dreams. But before anything else, don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell icon to show your support for me. It was three days when everyone began to notice Becca was gone. Even my dad, who was usually inattentive to everything, asked me on that fateful Tuesday, Where's the new girl? <laughs> huh? I said, suddenly waking from deep thought. The new girl, my dad said. The one you're always talking to, pretty, tall, too good for you? Remember her? She's only barely started here and she's already missed two days of work. I don't care if you've got a massive crush on her, she's gonna have to look for another job if she comes back without a proper excuse for just dropping off the face of the earth like that. That was what made me break down. I finally told my dad everything. I know I should have spoken about it sooner, but I was a coward, and I was just a kid. I didn't know what happened. What if she was just ignoring me because I split without an explanation that night? I was scared. But even at school, I didn't see her. And so I told my dad, and my dad called her house. No answer. That was when he finally took me down to the station. The cops went down to her house, and when her parents said she hadn't come home either, that was when they listed her down as a missing person. The school was struck by the strategy. Searches began. And three days later, I began to see her face on posters plastered everywhere. Missing. Rebecca Bunt. 1858. Last seen 10 kilometers outside of town. The school paper, the local publications, radio stations, the local TV station, they all wanted to talk to me. I was, after all, the last person she was with as far as we knew. And over and over, I told them all the same story. We went out, we ate, I went to the bathroom, and when I came back out, she was gone. Yeah, I lied, like the coward I was. I just couldn't bring myself to tell everyone the truth. The truth that when I was warned and told to run, I left her there. Who knows what could have happened to her because of me. I could have run with her. Whatever it was, I could have just been a man and protected her. Instead, I ran to save myself. And now she was missing. The police took me to where I last saw her, to that restaurant. But when we got there, there was nothing but sand. I tell you, every pore in my body went cold. Goosebumps ran up and down my spine. How? It was the first thing that came out of me. It, it was right here. The restaurant was right here. The ground looked like it hadn't been disturbed in centuries. It didn't even look like there was just an old restaurant there. No garden, no foundations, not a single sign that there was ever anything there but the barren desert and a few tumbleweeds. And that was when everything turned into a nightmare. Everyone knew I was lying, and for a completely different reason and about an entirely different thing. Immediately, I was suspect number one. I was the only one who was seen with her last, after all. Soon, everyone knew. Rumors began to spread. Josh killed Rebecca Bunt, and probably dumped her somewhere. I heard them whisper, and the police took me into custody. They couldn't hold me for long as they didn't have any evidence. But it ruined my life nonetheless. Nobody would talk to me. Even the university decided to indefinitely suspend me. And that was when the nightmares began. I had trouble sleeping to begin with. But when I finally would manage to get a moment's rest, Becca would haunt my dreams. It was the same every time. I would be driving, and no matter what direction I went, I always ended up in that desert. And suddenly, the old, dilapidated restaurant would rise out of the ground. Becca would appear from its doors, dressed in a long, flowing white dress. She would reach out her hands towards me, and then she would whisper, Come find me. Come find me, Josh. And then, I would run to her. I would reach for her hand, but as soon as I would get close to her, just before I could touch her, the ground would tremble. The world would warp and she would get sucked back into that restaurant and it would vanish under the earth again. And I would wake up screaming. That continued every night for a good two weeks. Every night, I would try to sleep. And every night, I would wake up horrified. There were times I began to dread sleep. I had to find her. That was all I knew. Everyone else was at the point of giving up on looking for her. 
By then, the town had moved on to other news, but her family were still out there looking for her. I would sometimes go on nighttime runs, pretending to exercise. But really, I just went out there in the woods, in the desert, hoping I'd one day run into her. Or anything. Maybe there was a clue. Something that someone missed. Her family eventually gave up too. They held a funeral for Becca, and I went. I wasn't thinking. I just wanted to say goodbye too. I didn't even want to show myself. I hid behind a tree. But then her mother saw me, and she went ballistic. She ran to me and slapped me so hard I stumbled and fell back onto the ground. How dare you show yourself here! She yelled as she cried. You killed my daughter! You vile, evil boy! What did you do to our little girl? Where is she? Where is our Rebecca? Uh, I'm... I'm sorry. I stuttered, both from shock and from fear. I... I, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I ran, as I tended to do. But for Rebecca's family, it was far from over. They told the cops what I did. They used their connections to make them arrest me, and they took me to court. It didn't matter that I didn't do anything, or that there was no evidence apart from the fact that I was the last one seen with her. I got convicted for Rebecca's disappearance. And you know how they did it? They used one small detail to convince the judge and the jury of my guilt. The fact that that day, when I went to her memorial, I told her mom, sorry. They used that to hammer the guilt on me. Nobody on the jury was sympathetic with me to begin with. I was weird. I was a loner. I had no friends. I fit the profile. And when I stupidly asked for her family's forgiveness, it only convinced them that I killed her. I have to admit... I too believe that I deserve to pay for her disappearance. If I hadn't run that day, who knows? Maybe she wouldn't have disappeared. I spent my first year in prison believing that. Until one day, I was called out of my cell to see a visitor. I had thought it was my dad. His business closed down after the whole scandal and he blamed it on me. So, he hadn't been to see me in a few months. Plus, they'd transferred me to a different facility, which was a couple states away. I didn't blame him for not coming to see me more often. I told myself I should apologize to him again when he visited next. But when I saw that the visitor wasn't my dad, my blood boiled. Sitting across from me through the bulletproof glass was Rebecca Bunt. Alive, well, and smiling. I didn't even know there was that much rage inside me. It had just been building up in me. And when I saw her there, smiling as if nothing was wrong, I snapped. I slammed my hands onto the bulletproof glass and screamed every expletive I could think of. The guards had to restrain me and force me to sit back down. They even tried to take me back to my cell, but Rebecca begged them to let me stay. I was seething. Why was she there? Why had she not come forward to tell everyone I didn't do anything to her? How dare she smile like that? I didn't have to ask her. She told me everything. You ruined my life. She said calmly as she continued to smile. And now, I've ruined yours. It's just karma. What are you talking about? I said through gritted teeth. Clayton Hunt, she said. Heir to an oil fortune. Son of my dad's biggest business partner. I don't even know who that is, I said. Of course you wouldn't. You're clueless as always. I was dating him in high school. That made me wince. What? You think I could ever have eyes for you? Especially back then? <laughs> I was supposed to marry him. You were just some guy I gave a ride to. And you think I would ever look at you twice? Hilarious. Anyway, you ruined us. You and your stupid vomiting mouth. That night, he was supposed to propose to me. Instead, after smelling your gross barf on me, he dumped me. My dad was really counting on his dad's investment, and you ruined it. You ruined everything. Did you really think I'd be going to that university out of choice? We almost went bankrupt thanks to you. One tiny, stupid thing you did. Nevertheless, you had to pay. And now you have. And thanks to the town's generous donations and the foundation my parents put up under my name, we're rich again. So... I thought I should at least come and say thank you. Becca made to stand, but before she could leave, I couldn't help but scream after her. 
You and your family, you're all evil, manipulative savages. You think you can do this to me? You fooled the whole town, and you made my dad suffer too. How dare you? You think you can just walk out of here? You think you can just do this without any consequences? The guards began to take me away. And then, Becca came as close as she could to the barrier and said, Josh, sweetheart, I already did. Have fun in there. Toodles. That was the last time I ever had a peaceful night's sleep.